I heard you and I have paper. I have lots and lots of paper. I have really put paper through more than paper deserved to be put through in my years as an artist. And I have, I guess, some opinions about paper. And I want to make sure that you have a video just dedicated to paper because I think you need to know where to start. So as a beginner versus a professional artist, there's going to be moments of paper that you're going to go through and decisions to be made. So let's just like go through this pile and decide on what kind of papers do the best as far as blends and maybe identify a couple of papers that you could start out with to see, you know, how you can paint and what you can paint and if you like painting on it. All right. So we're going to go through that. So let's start with the cheapest papers first. And I think I probably should pull up my, um, my Amazon affiliate account at this time, because that's where I have all the papers listed and I can actually shop the cheapest ones for you. Okay. So this is my Amazon store. All of the revenue generated from this Amazon store goes to our giveaways that we do in our group page every single week. So definitely use the Amazon um, affiliate pages if you can, or the Jackson's affiliate pages, because that's how we pay for the giveaway. So I appreciate you guys doing that. Um, let's start with this visual journal, because I remember when I first was just looking for something this size that had like a hard back and a spiral bound. The visual journal is only $9.81 in US dollars. And I found it to be a decent uh, starting kind of paper. Now, this is not 100% cotton paper. Of course not, right? It's by Strathmore. Strathmore isn't, they don't make bad paper, but they make paper that's difficult. That's, <laughs> that's how I can describe it. In the beginning, you might not notice, but if you are struggling with like these kind of edges, right, on your paper, um, then Strathmore might not be the one for you. So this is the visual journal. This is what it looks like. It's a small little journal, but I think it's great in size. And for the price, it is, it's a really, really good price for what you get. So you get, uh, it's 5.5 inches by eight inches. It's 140 pound, 300 GM paper. It is not, it's cold pressed. So it has a texture to it, a very, very light texture, but it doesn't have any like 100% cotton, nothing, no 100% cotton at all. Um, I think it's like probably a wood pulp paper. It's very stiff, uh, but it's a good little journal for doing things, you know, but what I find is it's a different effect that you get with the watercolor. Um, you get lots of streaks and a lot of like hard lines and hard edges on it. So if you feel like your watercolor is looking like this rather than um, more blended like that, then it's the paper, you know, because this is like a better paper, at least a step up anyway. Um, and that's really what Strathmore is. It just, it like, it's just a very thick paper that you can beat up kind of, you can't really remove color as much, but you get a lot of hard edges. You can still get some, some granulation though in it. It's just, uh, I would say if you're having a struggle, I don't want to say it's an easy paper to paint on. The 100% cotton papers basically paint themselves. <laughs> they really do. Because for instance, this is uh, another wood pulp paper, right? So this is a blend on Canson SL, XL, Canson XL. And this is a blend on 100% cotton paper. So let me point out, so the washes, the back washes, they have legs, a lot of legs. The, uh, there's a lot of streaking, right? But here there's only glazing and not as much streaking. You see how different these colors are blending? Right. And this is a, this is a Paul Rubens, hundred percent cotton watercolor paper. So That's not even going to be the best performer. One of the best performers that I have found is this one. 
besides Arsh. So let's get the streaking out of here. So you are going to get some streaking. You are going to get some difficulty. But as far as like just doing a lot of stuff quickly, Canson XL is decent. And the visual journal by Strathmore is not bad. I think Canson XL is a little easier to paint on because it doesn't I'll show you in just a second. It doesn't do everything that uh, Strathmore struggles with, but see like the beautiful blends on 100% cotton paper. It paints itself. In other words, like I put this there and just add some water and then it dries evenly and it continues to spread. That's what you get with Artistico. You get that with Arsh. You get that with uh, Canson Heritage. Um, all those 100% cotton papers that I've used, you get these nice blends, you know, it's easy to paint on. You get like the, you can gradate, you wouldn't get like a, if I were doing this on Strathmore, you would see a watermark where it would be really, really hard not to get the hard watermark edges on the paper. So that's a huge difference, right? So like, it makes you a better painter by far because like, See the, see the hard watermarks and the streaks that you get on non 100% cotton paper? You don't get that. It's like a world of difference. So should you invest in good paper? Yes, you should, even if you cut it into small things. Now, let me tell you some things. When you're going to say, you're going to say, oh, yeah, but I can't afford that. This sketchbook I made from folding one sheet of $5, 100% cotton paper. So these sketchbooks that I have for the classes, this is the granulating class. So in the granulating class, I teach you how to make this accordion sketchbook. And this is one sheet of paper that is 30 inches and you get 30 pages in this little sketchbook of 100% cotton paper. It cost me $5 because I got a five pack of Artistico paper and it only ended up being $5 per sheet. So you can get that uh, also through Jackson's. So I left an affiliate link for you <clears throat> in the description box. And right now, Jackson's is having a paper sale. So let's go take a look and see. So some of the papers that are good, Bockingford has a nice paper. It is not 100% cotton, but I paint on it and it's great. In fact, I uh, did do an entire sketchbook on it and, oh, I wish I had it. I forgot about that one. I don't think I have it. Let me see if I do. I might. Bockingford is a good one. So for, no. I don't have it, but I definitely want to mention these. I don't have it, but I did make a sketchbook out of one uh, pad of the Bockingford, and it wasn't the gummed pad. It was just a regular pad, and it generated a really, really nice sketchbook. The Fabriano Spiral Bound. I haven't messed with that one since the, my first Fabriano nightmare, but the Fabriano Artistico, I really, really love. Let's see if that one's on sale. Let's see what else is on sale. Right now they're having a paper sale. That's why I think it's good to mention paper. Anamula is delicious paper. It's just beautiful. And I made a whole sketchbook out of Anamula. So let's look because Anamula is on sale. So this is my Anamula sketchbook. And I made this from a pad. So I took the front of the pad and the back of the pad made a cover you can see so I just like glued it together kept it in one piece and flipped it over there's actually I have a video on how I did this <laughs> and this paper is gorgeous paper it's just like Fabriano Artistico though it really feels much much like it it's kind of like got a soft kind of feel it's not as crisp as Arsh Arch has like a sizing on it that's very very crispy this is a very soft paper but it's still uh, 140 pounds and it's got a nice texture to it. You see the texture? It's really, really nice to paint on. Not too textured where you can't do the lines and do line work, but it paints itself. You see these beautiful 
gradations and these blends, I can't really do those on really cheap paper. The, uh, the paper really makes a huge difference in the value and also the colors. So the colors are much more clear. The edges are much nicer on this kind of a paper. And, um, it definitely is, is great. Now this is equal to Arche. It's equal to, uh, Fabriano Artistico. And just to be clear, it's equal to Canson Heritage. Um, line work is great on this paper, actually. You can see how nice and crisp my lines are. It's wonderful, even with a texture, so you can still get a uh, gradation, you know, the, the granulation. I cannot do this at all on Strathmore. I wouldn't even try because <laughs> it just won't work out. I'll struggle and I have a lot of experience with painting and, and watercolor papers. Arches, I did the same thing. Now Arches, you see, this is why everybody uses it when you get to a certain level. So I pick up my Arches paper from Jackson's and it costs me, I don't think they have it on sale right now, but it costs me about $20 for this sheet and it's nine by 12. It comes in 12 sheets. And what I do is I take this part. And again, there's a video here on YouTube about it. And I fold it over itself. And I take the back chipboard. And I leave this attached. And that becomes my cover. And I just take the papers out. So you can see how this actually lays out. That becomes my cover. And then um, if I need to re-glue it, to the seams I can, but it's just really not hard to make. <laughs> See what I mean? I just folded it over. And then I take the, uh, the paper out, fold them into these signatures, what they call signatures. And this one I tried to sew. I'm not great at sewing them. I'm way better great at gluing them, although I have improved over time in, in stitching them. I did try to sew, but I ended up just gluing it anyway. But in, of course, this is like the best paper, right? And you can, I can see the difference in the way I paint and I can feel the difference in the way I paint on it. I really love it. And I can do a lot more on here, beating it up and adding layers and really just like, you know, getting lots of watercolor on here. Um, I'm really going bold and brilliant and crazy on Arsh. You can also do really great effects on Arsh, right? With, with different materials. So as far as professional grade, I would always do my big stuff on Arsh or Fabriano Artistico. I like those two. I like, I, I like the fact that you can get Fabriano Artistico for $5 for a 30 inch sheet. And I can basically do the same things on them. Um, but yeah, there is a difference. There's a crispierness. A crispierness is almost like there's a sizing on the Arsh paper as opposed to uh, Fabriano Artistico. So you should try at least one pad of each eventually, you know, like treat yourself. But if you fold them and you turn them into a sketchbook, this is like what, 12, 24, 36, 48 pages. It's 48 pages to paint on. So one, two, three, four, right? So like front and back. So 48 page sketchbook for the price of $20. So why not learn to make them, you know, and you don't even have to get fancy like I did. You could just fold the pages and glue them together in an accordion sketchbook, you know, or get a big sheet of paper and it costs a little more upfront. Maybe if you're going to do arches and just fold it, if you're going to fold it too, I would say arches is a little harder to fold than the Fabriano Artistico because this is a, a softer feeling paper. It's like lovely. It's so soft, but I do really like the way they both paint. Okay. So those are those two. Canson Heritage. I don't use this much anymore, but I do like the size of these sheets. I have the Canson in, um, the rough and the cold press and it is a beautiful paper but it I feel like for the price I would rather go with Arsh or Fabriano so I, I typically don't use this much anymore and I find that unless you can get on sale it's I don't know it's not worth the effort you know what I mean it's okay I have some things painted on it though so we can show you so this is painted on Canson XL paper 
yeah, is that a surprise or what? This is painted on Canson XL. Now what I did is because Canson XL comes in these really, really big sheets, I can actually do two things. I can make um, a sketchbook from Canson XL just by folding one of their really, really big sheets. And it makes a great swatch book, really does for testing things out. Of course, you're gonna get the streaking on Canson XL, but it depends on how you paint. I did manage to get some decent looking uh, swatches on it, only that it does bloom and the, like the water doesn't sink in very well. So of course it's gonna stay on the top of the paper. So you have to be careful with your water. Otherwise you'll get really hard edges and lots of blooms. But if you use just a damp watercolor brush, then you'll get a, a better performance from it. This is like too much color, too much water, and you just streak everywhere. It's like it's like I'm painting with gouache or acrylic, basically. You know what I mean? You can't really get the qualities of watercolor on the cheaper paper. But with that being said, knowing what this paper does, I was able to do this. And what this is, is this is tube paint with a spatula. So like I would take you know, a spatula and I would basically wet the paper and I would carve the watercolor onto it and because I wanted to get the streaks. So this is where I took advantage of the paper. And if I, when I do this technique on a hundred percent cotton paper, it comes out differently. It comes out really good though, but it comes out differently. So if you're a painter like this, then you can go ahead and use Canson XL in the large sheets as your paper. It's just that you're going to get watermarks. You're going to get a lot of things that you probably aren't looking to get, right? And that's in contrast to like this one, which is Paul Rubens. Paul Rubens makes a 100% cotton paper and it comes in blocks. They also make non 100% cotton. So keep an eye out and they make a lot of hot press versus cold press. This is a cold press 300, 140 pound. I always use the same, um, hundred percent cotton. It takes to line work really, really well because can you see the texture? It's, it's much like the Fabriano Artistico. It's got like kind of a light texture, you know, so you can do all of your line work on it but I use it a lot for my watercolor classes and these ones I'm going to show you these are all on that paper so we have really really nice um, the Paul Rubens does really nice transparency it does really nice blends it does not backwash because there's no like sizing on the paper. So the what you'll find is you want to do very light layers and kind of one one pass because what happens is when you paint on this, it like sinks in so quickly that you can get a water mark and you have to blend it out. So the best way to paint on this paper being that it's really inexpensive and 100% cotton is to wet the area first and then paint on it so that your first pass with the color is not wetting the paper because it'll sink in and create a little bit of a mark and you have to kind of go over it. But if you're doing transparent layers, it does those great, right? Because it's just kind of like uh, not super, super wet. Now with that being said, I do wet this paper a lot and you can see you can get really, really nice blends. You can get nice gradation in a paper like this. It swatches really, really well. So all of my big swatches that I do here on the channel are done on this paper. I teach on this paper. So the watercolor florals for beginners classes, we do a lot of these beautiful gradations and blends and the color is very, very saturated and stays there. So it's a great paper if you're able to access this paper on sale. And it comes in like a very, very big pack. So it does a good job. It does have a little bit, like I said, streaking when it's dry. So if it's dry and you do a pass, you can glaze, but you will get a little bit of streaking. If you use a damp brush instead of a super, super sopping wet brush, then, um, and you hit it all the way on the first pass, it won't streak, right? But wherever your brush stops, it's going to sink into the paper right away because it's super absorbent. So there is a little bit of a learning curve in painting with the Paul Rubens paper. But let me tell you something. They have these sketchbooks 
that are really nice and they're um they've got these bindings on them that are like leather like faux leather bindings and a little elastic you can take these with you and these are hot press sketchbooks but the hot press is really smooth to do line work to add gold you get really beautiful clear colors and you get very very even um even applications of color so if you're looking for a sketchbook i think and you don't want to make one this is a really great 100 percent cotton sketchbook let's go check the price on amazon because i know that the price changes a lot um let's see where is it so paul rubens watercolor paper okay so this right here is the little sketchbook and it comes in pink or black this is the 7.6 by 5 inches or 5.3 inches and it is $14.99 <clears throat> really good right 20 sheets paints beautifully comes in two colors I actually want to order another one of these it is hot press though just so you know that that means it's smoother so it has less of a texture but great for your sketchbook because it's like you know line work you can also set it up for a subscription where they send you one every so often um, like once a month at $14.24 pretty cool huh I think that's a really good deal and I've had a lot of fun with those sketchbooks this Paul Rubens paper at 140 pound um, cotton rag it's 50% cotton it's worth a try it's $12.80 again it's going to be highly absorbent but definitely worth a try. I think you'll love it. I prefer this one here, which is another beautiful block. So you end up with these gorgeous, like sketch kind of like out, outer blocks, you know, with the, with the leather binding. See what I mean? It's got, it comes in this book. This is a glued book. So it actually is glued together, but check out the price guys. So you get, this 100% cotton, 140 pound, 300 GSM, and it's seven inches or almost eight inches by five and a half, and it's $11.99. Great, right? You can also get the uh, 10 inch one, the seven by 10, for $17.99. And that gives you 20 sheets, front and back. You can paint front and back on these. Let me see what else that they have here. Bolung. So, Meaden. I didn't like this paper, the Meaden, at all. But the Bolung is pretty nice. This is a decent paper. I like Paul Rubens better, but for $16.99, 20 sheet block. This is a block, meaning that it is secured on all the sides. So, um, for instance, this block here that I use this is Fabriano Artistico so this is the one I teach all the time you like Paul Rubens yeah they're a good deal right um and they're a nice company too they send me a lot of products to try out Artistico this is my favorite one right now but it's because I actually got these they're 20 sheet blocks so they're glued uh so they stay put and then there's like a little area where you can lift them and just take them off. And I'll show you how to do that. So these blocks that you get and all the companies make them, they keep the paper drying perfectly flat. This was the lesson that I did yesterday from the printables. I have printables now. That's uh, printables are like ink sheets that you can print out and then just color them in. So you see how perfectly straight this dried, right? That's because it's on a block. Um, 
not that you can't get your other papers to dry, but like they warp a little bit more when they're not drying on a block, but still I don't really have a problem with it. But this is kind of neat, right? So like the blocks are fun. This is the Fabriano Artistico. So let's go back to the page. So the Boang comes in a um, 20 sheet block and there's different textures that you can get for different prices. The regular cold press texture is typically what I use because I do a lot of inking sometimes, you know, and I do a lot of teaching, so I don't have to really do as much with the uh, the rough grains. I usually use rough if I'm going to do like different kinds of effects for sale. Otherwise, I use just typical cold press, like a fine grain or just a regular texture or even a hot press. Although their hot press is a little pricey, I think that this is a really good deal. And this is the 300 GM Boang. Some people love this paper a lot and they keep painting on it because it's so inexpensive at $16.99. But the other ones are inexpensive that I'm showing you too. You can also sign up for once a month or once every two month deliveries and get it for $16.14. But as you can see, there's really no excuse for not having good paper because there's so many options now. This is Anamula. That was the sketchbook that I uh, showed you and great, beautiful paper, 100% cotton. Uh, I know professional artists that only paint with this paper exclusively. They love it and I love it too. It is a beautiful paper. I love my, my Anna Mula sketchbook and I would totally make another one. This is again, like Arsh's, it comes in 12 sheets for this price for $17.86, so it's a lot more price, but nine by 12, you can fold them in half and end up painting on both sides because it is available to paint on both sides. So beautiful paper, but that is a professional grade and professional level. Canson XL, yeah, we could talk about Canson XL. Canson XL is not a bad paper for beginners. I use it a lot to cut it up or um, like in these packs here. So this blue pack of watercolor paper, you can get this in nine by 12s, but you can also get it in huge sheets, like really, really big. And uh, what I've done with them in the blue pack, and it's like a wood paper. It's not hundred percent cotton at all. It's very stiff. I showed it to you. It does streak, but you can work around it. And like I said that, um, let's go back here. Hi, this was Canson XL. So I've actually used Canson XL for quite a few things. So the colors are great, but as you can tell, it does do a little bit of streaking. And sometimes I notice even with professional watercolor, can you see the shine? It like produces a shine on the color. And this is color that does not shine, but for some reason it shines on this paper. So it's really bizarre, but I've also used it, you can see in wet on wet or very, very wet painting, you do get a lot of blooming. You can't stop the blooming. It definitely will bloom even on like damp. Um, so you're going to get this kind of bloom, but in some ways it's kind of fun and kind of a neat look like here. It really worked in the advantage, right? Because you get these harsh lines on the ends of the, uh, of the petals, but you know, if you're painting transparency, that actually works in your direction. You can draw on it though, which is really nice. So line and washes, you can do well. So this is a good paper for a starter for a beginner. So let's like review the prices. So like this is 30 sheets per pack. You get a six pack. I don't even know that you would go through that much paper at 48.27, which is amazing, right? For a six pack, 30 sheets and they're nine by 12s. Like I said, you can get them really large as well. And um, I just am not seeing it here. I actually, I have like huge pieces and I fold them up and make those accordion sketchbooks out of them. So that was Canson XL. And by the way, guys, I have a uh, link to a store with all of this in it. So you don't have to go find it. <laughs> it's in the description box for you. Let me look through and see if there's anything else that 
I've painted with that I like. Um, hmm. I mean, we pretty much talked about it. We could talk a little bit about Strathmore more. Strathmore, like I said, the visual journal is decent to take with you. It's fun. It does streak. You get blooming, but you can draw on it. You can do a lot of things on it. You can definitely use it for gouache, acrylic, and watercolor. So mix media, it will handle. So just for jotting down ideas, taking something quick with you for 22 sheets, 9 by 12s. Uh, this is the larger version. I really like that little version for $9.81 that is just the 8.5 inch. Actually, I would... I would get that again and use it just for sampling and just for having fun with and throwing it into my um, pocketbook if I wasn't making these accordion sketchbooks for $5 on 100% cotton paper. So in contrast, if you don't want to make something and you don't mind that it's not 100% cotton, the visual journal you can take with you and do some fun stuff with. It just doesn't allow you to paint the traditional qualities of watercolor. Neither do, do the other Strathmore papers, by the way. So there are other Strathmore papers that people recommend. I don't use them for anything but swatching because I just simply don't like them at all. They just give me so much trouble. And there's a lot of other stuff. Uh, as far as like the, the different really expensive sketchbooks i'm not even going to go through those because really they are so much money and such a waste of money considering that you could buy big sheets right uh, we can't talk about the canson the canson has a wire bound sketchbook that's quite large and it comes in smaller sizes as well it does a good job but i would say this is equal to the strathmore so 20 sheets the eight and a half by five and a half at 1079. It's okay. It's okay for me mixed media. But again, you have options, guys. Let me just remind you, you can make a journal for five dollars. You know what I mean? So you have options. You don't have to go with really super cheap paper. So I made this journal just by taking the cover, the chipboard off of one of these books. So like when I use these up, I always save these because they're really sturdy and you don't have to take that apart. You end up with the chipboard and the front and you can literally put another or glue another sketchbook in there. So this one, if I cut it in half, right, completely all the way in half, once the paper's gone, I end up with two really nice covers. And what I do is I'll either paint the covers and put and then glue the paper onto them, right? So I just glued this one. And I did this one without gluing it in. I actually just use string that I keep it in. But this slides out so I could use this again. And this is just a folded piece, 30 inch, 100% cotton Fabriano artistical paper. Like I started this video, $5 five dollars so I make tons of these and I make them in the class you can learn to make them in the granulating uh, watercolor class one final thing that we could talk about for paper and I'll show you some of these so really quickly this is beautiful paper Fabriano Artistico this is the block so this this block that also comes in 30 inch sheets for $5 per sheet. This is Paul Rubens, 100% cotton. This is, I'm trying to think, Fabriano Artistico. This is Canson XL. Kind of did a good job with that one, right? Considering, now if you look close, do you see the do you see the streaks? But they look good. So if if you paint like this, you'll be okay. <laughs> you'll be okay. If you want more blended, this is uh, Paul Rubens. Paul Rubens. And I can actually sell this one because this one is archive quality. So there's another thing to consider. But no, no streaks. Really, really beautiful. Beautiful color and blends. Arches. Arch paper crispy very very crispy really interesting granulation really nice blends this is like five minute splotches 
guess what this one is? Do we like it? Do we not like it? You would be able to identify what it is if you see the sheen on the professional watercolor. Can you see right there and right there? Do you see how it's shining like Kiritake on Mastone? Kiritake shines on Mastone, by the way. It's a Japanese watercolor. All right, this is Danielle Smith watercolor. It's not supposed to shine on Mastone, but I painted this one on Kansen. So painting it on the Kansen, it just, although I was able to get some nice blends going very, very carefully, it still shines on Mastone and it's prone to the blotching. But this was done with a palette knife and a little bit of water. So if you paint like this, you can get away. You can make Kansen XL work for you. This one, oh, let's just talk about this paper for a second. This was the weirdest paper I have ever painted on. This was a Fabriano paper, but it's that textured, like um, wire bound, like one, two, three paper or something. And it is the most frustrating paper. I, okay, I'm not going to talk about it. I did make it work though. I think <laughs> I just did a lot of granulation on it, but don't get that one. Uh, these ones are the Canson XL. So just some ideas. If you're painting loose and you, and the blotches can work out for you, you could get some decent looks with it. Right. But again, it is prone to blooming. You get a lot of these hard edges, which you could use to your advantage if you're a little bit crafty. Canson XL. Fabriano. So Fabriano in a similar style, but you see how the glazes on the leaves are not, they're, they're different. You know what I mean? Like you see how this is shiny? Annoying, right? That's Canson XL. It takes professional watercolor and it turns it into a shiny mess. But from far away, it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> and then you can see the blooming here, right? That's not supposed to do it, but it worked. And you can see the streaking and the outer edge, how it, like what happens is the water doesn't dry, it accumulates on the paper. So there's nothing for it to sink into. And so therefore you end up with really hard edges. Where here, the paper is 100% cotton. So the only edges you see are my inked edges, you know? And of course the, the watercolor is not shiny because it's 100% cotton paper. So those are some of the little differences, but big differences, right? Again, Canson SL. So this is my Mary Blue and see how shiny it is? That's, that's really an indication of cheaper watercolor. And we know my Mary Blue is not cheap watercolor. You know what I mean? So it paper makes a lot of difference. And again, lots of streaking. Um, the Animula, if you want to just see Animula, gorgeous. Lots of layers, crazy layers, but matte finish, beautiful as it should be, watercolor blends, you know, um, you can do line work, you can do just beautiful, beautiful, brilliant colors on here, you know, very, very happy with this paper as well. So again, the top ones, Fabriano Artistico, Arches, and Animula are my top favorites. This is Paul Rubens a good performer. But again, there's a learning curve to it. When you first paint, whatever you paint sinks right into the paper quickly. So you end up having to compensate for it um, a little bit. So let me show you what I mean by that. So like, here's a streak that I'm going to create with water. So I have to give it a second because wherever I put the water, that's where it's going to sink in and you're going to end up with an edge. Okay. So let's take, um, some bright, some bright blue. So normally when you put, can you see that? Normally when you put water on your paper and then you add color, it will spread. So that's a usual result, right? And then when I paint, normally it sits on there long enough for me to grab my paint 
and then continue the line. But you have to be careful because if you're in this weight, it'll work. But watch this. So I'm going to paint. I'm going to get some more paint. Then I'm going to continue. I'm going to paint. Let's wet my brush. So if I wet my brush a little bit more, then I paint. And then I continue. So now if you leave this dry, you can't get the line out. So we're going to leave that dry and we're going to go back. See what I mean? See the harsh line there? Now on the other papers, it will blend and it will keep working and blending until it goes away. But on this paper, it streaks. See the glaze? Now I can fix it by darkening the color and really, really blending and blending and blending. So as long as you can work through that, you'll be okay. But I do find that like when I blend these out, I end up with a streaked line and then I have to sit there and I have to work at it. It's just a little ridiculous detail, but on occasion it has really gotten in my way like there. See how that is? So like, I don't want this there. So I want to blend it and you can see, I really have to work the paper to get that to happen. And if I were to use too much color, I would get a bloom or too much water, I would get a bloom. So I have to go over the entire area again. So what happens is if I want to uh, carry my, my blend down, so say I'm like reloading my brush. And this is why I say use a brush with enough water to get it on one pass because I have to be really careful with a, with a brush that I have to reload because you see the streak right there. I can't, I have to work at it to get it out. And then I have to go above it because if I stopped there, it would bloom. See what I mean? So you don't really need to have that kind of struggle with hundred percent cotton paper, but at the same time, if you get it at a good price, you can work around it. And if you're not, if you are really careful with your, your gradient washes, like for instance, I would use the Princeton Neptune series for all wet on wet and gradient washes. So we'll take the same color, load my brush with lots of water, and then I get a nice even wash and I can do it in one strike, right? But see that, you see that color variation? It's still there. So what do I have to do? I have to keep going over it. And every time I go over it, if I were using multiple colors, they would blend together. Then if I, um, it's still there. You see that? So if I darken this area, now I'm having to work way too hard because you shouldn't have to work that hard to get a wash. Your wash should still which should blend well. And I can still see the line. You can kind of still see it. Now, if this dries down, this is going to be darker than the rest. So the wash is not going to be exactly even. I also find that on uh, Paul Rubens, although this is great, you cannot get an even wash without these blotches. You see the little blotches, the little marks? It's just in the paper. So if you're looking to do very, very light washes, that are just washes, this is not the paper for that. You would want to go with a more expensive paper like Animula because you will get, there's like no sizing on their 100% cotton. So the cotton kind of like, you can't beat it up that much. It will, it will definitely pill. See that? So it's an expensive, yes, it's a way to paint on 100% cotton paper and it's great in the little sketchbooks, but there are some things that you cannot do with this paper that you can do with other papers so much easier. Okay. And the last little thing I received this, I had to get it, um, on Amazon and it's actually really cool. I've never seen one of these before. So this, what this is, is it's a pre-made swatch book. So it already has the swatches. It's a very smooth paper. So I would say this is more like a Canson XL, right? So it's not like an expensive watercolor paper at all. I don't even know. I would imagine feeling this paper that it's going to, it's going to streak a lot, but it's only swatches. So what I would do when you swatch is I would use like 
a uh, Princeton Aqua Elite that doesn't hold a ton of water, I would make my brush just damp and I would mix all my colors in my pans first and really work them into the color that you want to swatch and then swatch in light layers. That's what I would do with this paper because I can feel it already. It's going to have watermarks and blooms and stuff, but how cool is it that like literally it's got the little divider sheets and it's it's wire bound these little wire like rings but i just thought this was really neat it's twenty dollars so not bad really considering it's got all the rolled sheets but just in comparison when i do my swatches I use Paul Rubens paper and my painter tape and I just divide it up. Then I can fold these sheets or hang them on the wall. I can color the fronts and the backs and literally create my own book of watercolor swatches for very, very cheap. And I can just keep loading the pages, make them any size I want. You know what I mean? So it's not really necessary. So if you wanted to use Paul Rubens for this, I can actually do very, very nice light glazes, slightly streaky, just a bit, you know, and that's why I know that there's a learning curve on Paul Rubens because sometimes you lay the color down and it just will streak and no matter what you do, you just really can't get it out. You know what I mean? But it's great for swatching colors because it's a large sheet and it's bendable even at this weight and like you can fold it really easily you could put holes in it and put it in your own binder and all you have to do is just separate them out with the tape so that's kind of a workaround to something like this when i do swatch uh, i am going to keep it as a inventory of my colors so as i swatch the colors i will show it to you and see we'll we'll take a look and see how it does and if it annoys the heck out of me then i probably will just do mass tone thick swatches but we're gonna see i can already see where it's kind of streaking on their sample but i thought you might want to see it all right guys so there's my paper like hour <laughs> it took me i hope this really starts a discussion on what kind of paper you use i would love to know and there's so many papers out there don't forget please use the affiliate links if you are going to purchase and let me know if you do because what happens when you do is you can get a raffle ticket to enter to win our monthly giveaway that is just for the people using all of the affiliate links on either Amazon or Jackson's to make their purchases. Don't forget Jackson's has a sale going on right now. So you might want to check out the sale because they have all of the better papers and some really nice sketchbooks and everything. Next coming up, I will do a video just like this going over watercolor and watercolor pricing as well as brushes and brush pricing so that you guys have three really nice beginner videos on, uh, you know, how to make good decisions, maybe. <laughs> how to make decisions based on these things, like what pens to use, what the cost of these things should actually be. And so that you're not really, really lost and you just kind of have a bottom line across two sites of what the prices are and uh, what I think of the products because if you only saw my studio, it's crazy. I have amois full of papers, paints, and brushes. It's, it's, it's like, I would say maybe an obsession, but it is what I do for a living. So it's okay, right? All right. Happy painting. Have a great day.